I know it's kind of an obvious place to start, but when did when did young Michael kind of st- first sort of start listening to music and getting into drums? How did that come about for you? Yeah, uh, I guess drums were always a little bit later in a sense. Um, like for me, like music was always kind of part of the family, not a, like playing wise, but more listening to like I think his uncle's been to like every single Stiff Little Fingers gig in the Barrowlands for the past like 26 years or something like that so like music's always just been generally on like during the summer there would be no TV on it would just be music getting played every day while the sunshine was out you know and running in and out the doors but uh, it was more it was like my dad's 40th birthday my mum got him like a starter drum kit basically because he'd played when he was younger mm-hmm. and then uh, like after a couple of years he was like oh why don't why don't you try kind of thing and uh just took me for a couple of lessons to like a, a a studio nearby and then uh that was it from there on so it was like around about 11 i started actually concentrating on playing okay. on playing drums yeah did you you know from say you know <clears throat> 11 to you know leaving school were you in bands were you in local bands or anything like that or um not really, not really in bands, like more until I was like pushing like 17, 18 kind of thing. Um, I started playing in school when I was 11 because that was like first year of first year of high school for me. Mm-hmm. And I walked in like a couple of weeks in the music class and uh, they were like, I remember the night before I was like, I was asked, saying to my dad, and I was like, they want like people to go up and play if they can play an instrument. And they're like, all right, so you can play drums. And then I'm like, uh, yeah, but like, what, what should I play? I was like, I need something easy because I've not got like it wasn't any headphones or anything like that. It was played through speakers and you're playing along to it. So it was like Teenage Kicks was was the like one of the great, first songs. Great choice. Yeah, and uh, but like it, that as soon as I done it, it like if, like everyone in class started clapping and stuff like that, and then like the music teacher put me aside and he's like, right, we'll start you on drum lessons with the drum tutor that was in there. Okay. So the more I progressed into that, it was like forced my friend to learn guitar, and me and him would just jam out for ages on the weekends and stuff like that and mm-hmm. i think it was maybe a few years later that uh we ended up setting up an amp and uh, a drum kit in my mum and dad's garage and just played to a bunch of friends basically like four songs that we'd written so mm-hmm. that was kind of the first the first ever gig in a yeah. sense that I played for us. it was so much fun you know what i mean to just yeah. get up in front of people and and, and play and Mate, that's what that's started. it right there so much fun. I mean, what you just said, that is it, is it? In a nutshell, if it's fun and you enjoy something, I can't think of a better a better job to be in, really. You know, exactly. Like, like that's that's what they always say. If you're having fun while you're working, then that's the job. That's Absolutely. the job for you, I guess. Was there any particular drummers when you were growing up that you really clocked and you really, you know, you wanted to play like them? Yeah. I, not really, in a sense. Like, okay. when I when I was playing, like, a I would listen to a lot of different like sort of indie bands and stuff like that. Like one of my favorite bands ever is like Block Party, mm, and uh, like he's uh, Matt Tong is actually one of my favorite drummers. Uh, okay. Like I feel like I guess like they've not been around as long, but I mean it's like fifteen years. I know he's yeah. not been in the band for a while as well, but he's like insane to watch live, and some of the stuff that he comes up with is is insane. But uh, I just remember when I was in college one of the classes the drum tutor like stood up like i just went around the class saying all right one of your inspirational drummers and everyone's saying like Vinnie Corluta and steve gadd and tommy igo and stuff like that and i'm like i have no idea who any of these people are <laughs> <laughs> That's and, uh, like the only the only name that could come to my head was travis barker because blank 182 and i was like that's that's the age i was listening to him uh, so like no like i don't know i've always kind of I always enjoy watching other drummers, but I, I, I feel like if I look too much at one drummer, then I end up becoming a bit too much like them. So I just enjoy kind of playing along to songs, but having my own technique with it in a sense, yeah. and, you know, and trying to build something that, I, that I've got instead of, you know, following uh, a specific drummer in a sense. Yeah. But I mean, all these drummers that people talk about, are, you know, they're amazing. Because obviously you're sitting right now in LA and you're, yeah. you're from Scotland originally. So obviously we've got a bit of a story to get to from from where, where you started off in life and where you're sitting right now. So yeah. did you end up, uh, was Youngblood something you got while you still lived in Scotland and you moved down to London? Or or was there bands before long, uh, Youngblood that you were doing? Yeah, there was a, there was like a couple. I remember uh, like one of, the, one of the first bands that kind of 
done anything like released music and uh, I think the biggest thing we'd done was like uh, the tea break, tea break stage at uh, Tina Park. Mm. Uh, it's like, my, but it was my own band of uh, Waiting for Go that were called. Okay. And uh, like, it was funnily enough, like the band that I was talking about before with my friend that learned guitar mm. um, from school, like that kind of just fell away once we'd finished high school. And yeah, my dad was like, oh, you should look to try and find another band and stuff. He saw an advert on Gumtree for a, uh, for this band that were looking for a drummer, and I was like, oh, well, what what guitar? Uh, like, yeah. you know, what, going to it. Uh, it was like a little audition kind of thing. So went back uh, for two auditions, and they were like they wanted me to be in be in the band. So that was like for a good couple of years, maybe like up until I was 21, 22. Mm-hmm. Um, and then moved on to working with this girl called Chloe, uh, kind of like pop artist um, for a few years. And uh, just as that was kind of falling away from from Grace kind of thing, um, one of my good friends, Emmett, he'd uh, messaged me through a, a hard manager, and he was like, "Like I've got a, I've got this artist. Want want you come play drums for him?" Um, there's a like we were playing. I was playing a gig in London, and uh, he was like, "We'll meet you there." And then uh, if things go well, then we'll sort out a rehearsal for like the next weekend. Yeah. weekend. Uh, so I was like, all right, cool. And that's when I met Dom and Adam, who's the guitarist. And then uh, just like we, we had it off after that, like after that show, mm-hmm. in a sense, just chatting. And Emmett called me the next day. He was like, right, you've got a, a 10 a.m. rehearsal book for in London. Get your ass down on Friday. You and we'll see, we'll see you there. Yeah. And that like that, that was that kind of thing, like. That first rehearsal that I was talking about uh, that we got like five years ago, uh, he, like he mentioned in the room was I just wanted to be like crazy, and then every time we were in that room, he was like pre- playing to uh, uh, Brixton every okay. time in yeah. a sense, and that that's always been in his head. Yeah, in a sense, like he's always been playing those big gigs, you know, uh, since the start, and no matter how much energy that you think he can put into it, he puts even more into it sometimes and you know like and that that's one thing I, I think that's like got us to where we are today is that live show in a yeah. sense you know like the energetic is like because people always ask me like what, what's the music like and I'm like there's pop there's rock you know there's all these elements but really it is a uh, crowd interactive punk show in a sense when you got because you know there's a lot of live instruments in it and uh, you're allowed to hit as hard as you can and stuff like that, which is one of the main reasons that I love playing for him as well. You know, like <laughs> playing you know, hard, yeah. Because I met the amount of small venues that we're in growing up and stuff like that. Like, oh, was, oh the drummer's too loud, the drummer's too loud, and stuff like that. And uh, yeah. but you know, with this, it was like the the louder the better. So yeah, you know, that's, that's what great. It was all about. So I was checking, mate. You guys have toured loads, mate. You've been, you know, you've been around the world a lot, and you've done lots of um, lots of festivals and stuff. I noticed one of the things I, I read. Is that you did? Was it the very last Warped tour in the states? Yeah, yeah. How was that experience? Uh, it was an experience. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, that sounds loaded. You want yeah. to care to share? <laughs> uh, I mean, like I enjoyed it. Like I, I grew up listening to a bit of pop punk music in a sense. Is like probably like one of my favorite bands as well. Is like a day, a day to remember. You know, mm-hmm. like that kind of like music. Not too far into the sort of screaming aspect, but yeah. you know, little bits of it. Um, but yeah, like we done the East Coast okay. side of it. So like it goes from the West to the East. So it was like a month we done it with Australia in between okay. as well, which was like 12, I think we've done 12 days in Australia. But uh, it was, it was right. I mean, we were on a bus. So it wasn't, it wasn't as like, you know what I mean? Like as bad as like maybe some of the other, like the other artists were having. But uh, yeah, you were up at 7 a.m. every morning to go and help load in everyone's gear from the truck okay and you're, you're 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 essentially in a car park every day so you leave the same place and then you wake up in the same place just yeah. in the different part of america and uh but yeah so you're helping loading everything up and then the uh like the stage starts to get set up because it's all just on rolling trucks okay and, uh so it's the same state it's the same stage every day as well so does all the bands muck in and help is it is it or was it just yeah. you guys were helping, but everyone kind of mucks in and helps. Is that is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, like everyone will, um, like everyone from 
on your stage will come to your stage where like that's the thing you need to find your stage as well it's not as if it's right right in front of you you need yeah. to get out the sun's blinding and you're like right where do i actually where do i actually go here um but yeah all the bands which is which is great and i think that's why they do it if you know what i mean it just yeah. like it's supposed to bring bands together and a lot i feel like maybe bands are always in competition with each other you know trying to get your number one singles or yeah. album stuff like that or sell out tours and stuff and uh, so you know like it was good to have like that kind of togetherness with other bands and stuff like yeah. that um but yeah like by the time you, you would get all the gear out and separate it in each band it was all be labeled and then your uh your stage time comes out at nine o'clock every morning mm-hmm. so it's not as if you know your stage times for the whole oh really so it just is every day it's kind of slightly different yeah every day you could be on at 11 15 in the morning or you could be on at eight o'clock at night oh wow okay. and, like so you're you're just kind of waiting how was Lollapalooza? Because I saw I saw you played Lollapalooza Festival as well. Uh, that was straight after it. Oh, was uh, it? Yeah, okay. Really, yeah, in Chicago. Yeah, that was amazing. That was that I was bet. really. Cool. I've never played the- that. I'd love to do that festival. Yeah, I mean, like Chicago is like one of the my, one of my favorite cities to visit, yeah. and, uh, especially visiting there in the summer. Yeah. You know, and being at a festival all weekend because we got there on the Friday, but we weren't playing the Saturday, and we had like a couple of. We were actually supporting Catfish in the bottom end mm-hmm. uh, on the Friday and then played open the main stage on the Saturday. Okay. Uh, so it was a it was a, a really great weekend to to have there. That's um great. I think I, I think on the Sunday we had a headline show somewhere else. So we're, oh, amazing. we're terribly terribly hungover. <laughs> Obviously, like you're sitting in in, uh, in the States now and you've have you permanently relocated or are you just staying there at the moment? How, how no, did you uh, end up moving out there from the UK? So I end up, I was touring like maybe like five years ago or something like that and uh, ended up meeting a girl out here. Okay. Who's now, I'm happy to say is now my wife. Oh, congrats. So, okay. Yeah. Great. So uh, I moved out here when when I met up with the Youngblood team, like Dom and Adam, uh, we moved in together for a year mm-hmm. in London. Uh, but after that, it was like, well, dur- during that, it was like six months of us kind of grafting, playing gigs and stuff like that. And then something took off and we got a gig opportunity out in LA. Uh, and then from then, it was like, that was when we like, signed in- Interscope and Geffen. Uh, so from then on, it was like six months. We were, we were just like all over the place in a okay. sense. So the apartment in uh, London just didn't make any sense. We were all paying for it. And, yeah. you know, so that's when I ended up just, like moving out here and i spent like a, a good amount of time out here as, as well so it just kind of yeah, made sense, sense. To, yeah to move in and well, that's, that's great it's been, man. It's, been, it's been great since you know yeah yeah i guess it, it makes it makes sense that we talk about the drums because you play the tile drums like myself and it it'd be nice for you to share um you know our, our good friend george frederick obviously looks after you man i'll be interested to know what uh, what your kit setup is and what you what you like to use man for your gig yeah so well the first time that I met George was uh was a couple of years ago and he I'd just been put in touch uh through uh Matt who plays with Don Broco. Okay. I'm sure he's, yeah. he's an Italian guy as well. Yeah. And, uh, like he, we knew a, a tech and uh, he uh, his name's Ben, he put me in touch with George and mm-hmm. he was just like, Yeah, just come up, try it, try out the kits. And I've always been a fan of like sort of maple shells. Mm-hmm. Um, so he like, but like when I got there, I was chatting away to him. Obviously, as soon as we knew we were both Arsenal fans, he, I think he liked <laughs> even more. Okay. Um, the so, deal was like, done. Exactly. So he, he let me he let me try like a, a bunch of different kits out, like, like the acrylic kit. Uh, they had like the cafe racer kit and stuff like that as well. Yeah. But yeah, as soon as I played the maple kit, it was that was that was a job done for me. But uh, yeah. the, I, I used I mainly used the same kit sizes everywhere i go it's usually a 22 inch uh kick drum 12 inch mm-hmm. rack tom and then a 16 inch floor tom um, okay. i just feel like i've never really wanted to add more drums in a sense you know you don't need them man ringo exactly. Starr says you don't need them man i mean that's just about i mean exactly what you've shared there is a, is a good solid kit setup you can do what you need to do with that right yeah and i feel like those those drums if you can do a lot with them then you know and and you can like the way the Natal kit sounds, it's like it's so punchy, yeah, and so what like the warm tones you get in all these venues and stuff like that. You know, yeah. it's so easy to tune. I feel yeah. like 
I've had the, the kit that I've got out here is one of the cafe racer kits. Mm-hmm. Do you know it's the Birchwood? And I've had the same skins on for like over a year now. Wow. And used them that that gig last week. And no one no one batted an eyelid in yeah, a sense yeah. of, of how they sounded. And uh but yeah, it's definitely one of one of my favorite drum kits I've ever I've ever played and stuff like that. Because I know like a lot of people will go to like or like drummers want like you know the other the other brands but like as soon as uh like getting to meet george and seeing the factory and and uh seeing all like all the stuff that they do you know with yeah. like with marshall and and uh you know it's, it's i love being part of a company that's you know that's like friends rather than just being another number in a sense you know I you can you nailed it, whatever you want you know that's exactly how i feel you know it is Obviously, the most important thing if you're going to go to a company is the sound of of, of the equipment you, that you're actually going to use. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah. but but ultimately, you know, it is about people. Like you say, in the fact that Marshall and Natal can really yeah. look after us. And I've been lucky like yourself that no matter where you go and where you go on tour, they always have got your back and there's kits available for you. And, you know, I've been, yeah. I've been really, I've been really uh, lucky like that. Listen, with all your experience, mate, and... <clears throat> everything you've learned and you know you've kind of crafted for yourself behind the kit if 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 you were to be asked you know um to share you know uh, what things would you sort of inspire a young person coming up playing the drums what would you suggest that they any any tips and things that you want to share that might inspire someone to play drums um practice practice definitely is definitely the the key to like and but also enjoy it uh, like in a sense and never never want to give up and stuff like i remember when i was like in that sort of teenage age of like 15 18 it was like that was the most difficult part of like because you don't really you want to go out with your friends you don't want to sit in and practice and study drums and stuff like that you know um but once i i got through that i could see the longevity of what it could be in yeah. a sense i mean i never knew it would it would come this far uh, yeah. and it tends to be playing playing all these kind of festivals and shows and flying around the world and stuff like that but hey mate how does your dad feel about it because going back to the early part of the story is that he got a drum kit for his 40th birthday right yeah and then then here you are you know all these years know. later Any, he, uh, must, he must be over the moon for you right yeah i, I mean like I, i'll always like hold, hold i always have him in my head every time i play drums and stuff like that anytime I, i'm i'm doing any shows but uh no, I like him and my mom and my brother. They love seeing what we're doing and you know flying around the world and stuff. But yeah. anytime, anytime we play Glasgow, everyone's in. <laughs> if you know what I mean, like get get us tickets. You better get us. I bet. I bet. I bet. It's mad when you go home, isn't it? And you play shows in your hometown. God. Yeah, I know because it feels home. like as much as like Dom's the, the sort of forefront of young blood. Like uh, it feels like it's our our, our show. <laughs> like because Adam's from Scotland as well. So okay. We all get everyone comes down like has oh god like it's like anytime they're asking for guest lists and stuff like that like our tour manager would be like ah, i've got like 10 names and adam can back like 30 and oh, <laughs> but it's just all his mates and all his family he's got loads of loads of family and stuff like that as well yeah, so yeah. but yeah that feels like the the big hometown show but Absolutely. it's funny anytime anytime we play glasgow I always get my dad up uh, on the drums to oh, like like during sound check or something like that. Oh, just so okay. I thought you were going to say in the show. Oh, that's really nice. Man. <laughs> but mate, thank, thanks for your time. I think this has been great, and I think it's really good that you've um made the time, you know, for us today. And I no, to, appreciate, uh, appreciate you it. Have a nice day. It's it's actually great to see a drummer up before nine before, before nine a.m. It's, it's amazing. amazing. Well, listen, look after yourself. You too, mate. Yeah. All right. Thanks for chatting to us. Um, we'll speak soon. Okay. Thanks, man. Thanks again, Steve.